Welcome to Watercolors with Jaylene and thank you for joining me today. So for today's project um, I have got a set of three greeting cards. They are all sand dollars and um, I like to put paint these and put them together as a set and so we'll be painting these today in the three different colors. I have a blue, a green, and a purple. And so once we get these all together, then I'll show you how I put them together as a set, a gift set that I give out. And uh, everybody that gets them absolutely loves them. So they're always a hit. They're very fun and easy to do. And I'm going to show you just how easy they are today. So before we get started, I would like to ask you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Um, if you enjoy the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And uh, so we'll get started with the materials list for today. So for the cards, I do purchase my uh, little, the basic greeting card, the white stock, and um, they come with the, the cards themselves are five and a half by four inches, and they do have matching envelopes. I get those just at the local craft store. And then the solid color background paper, that measures four and a half by three and a half. And then my watercolor paper that measures three and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I'm going to put all of these measurements down in the description below if you want to go ahead and, and do them the same size as these. Uh, if you have cards, the greeting card stock that you, if you have it in another size and you want to, you know, scale it to that size, that's great also. So I'm going to put these aside for now. And then to get started, I have on two of the three pieces of watercolor paper, I have already lightly drawn my um, sand dollars on there. And actually at this point, let me back up for just a moment. So I did go over that. So for my other supplies, I just have the three colors of paint. Um, and with each one of these cards, we only use one color. That's why it's so easy. And it's nice, you'll just see, as we go, you'll see the difference, um, how I how I do the different tones on each one of the sand dollars to make them look a little worn. And so then I do have double-sided tape. I have got my um, pencil and then also my eraser for drawing in the sand dollars. I have a micron pen and that's basically for the framing of it. I have two uh, watercolor paint brushes. One is a size eight round and the other is a one round. And let's see, what else do we need with this? My paints, my blotting paper, clean water, and I think we're all set to go. So, um, so I did go ahead and I penciled it in on the first two and then on the third one, just to save a little bit of time, I'll show you exactly how I go about doing that on this one. So I take, and you can use anything that you have handy. Um, this is just a plastic cup and I use the bottom part of it to uh, pencil in a circle. And I don't really trust myself to do it freehand to get a nice round circle. So I do cheat a little bit with this and that's okay. So real lightly we pencil in the roundness and then in one corner or one area, just kind of pencil in a V. And then I always go around the edge because sand dollars are not perfectly round. So I do kind of make a little bit of a jagged circle. And then once all the paint is dry, we'll go in and erase that. And I'll show you uh, how we go about that in a bit. And then I put in five teardrop shape uh, openings and they can be different different sizes different thicknesses because as we know out in the real world they are not perfect so be sure you aren't making everything perfect perfect is not what we're striving for today <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna start out and we'll work on the blue one first. And um, as I mentioned, each one of these, the color 
we're only using one color and it's just going to be with how much paint we put on. So what I like to do first is just go around and I'm actually going to get just a just a very, very small amount of paint on my brush. And I do want to uh, just kind of put a little bit of water around the entire sand dollar so that when we go to put the paint on, the paint will blend very smoothly throughout. We don't want any um, of the solid dry lines that have a tendency to form when you're painting wet on dry. So it might be a little hard to see that on the camera, but I do have the, the water down everywhere. So I'm going to grab a little bit of paint on my brush and just start painting in. And there is quite a bit of water on my brush also. So the way I like to do this is I go around and with just a little bit of paint um, on my brush, I, I like to pull it around in the beginning. And as I pull it around, of course, it will get lighter and lighter. And um, once I have the entire thing painted, that's what, and I'm going to put just a little bit more water on my brush, just because I do want to keep this pretty wet as I'm working on the, the base coat here. All right, and I can grab just a little more color. And these are so quick and easy to do, and they're a lot of fun. And as I mentioned, everybody that receives these is a little, um, I, I do them mainly as a housewarming gift. And when I have people coming down to visit, because I do live on the Gulf Coast of Florida. So when I have people come to visit, I like to give them a set of cards to take home. Everyone loves them. Okay, so I do have it painted in everywhere. And now what I want to do is just go back in, grab a little bit more paint on my brush. And in some areas, I just want to dab it in. And because the card itself is still wet, or the paint is still wet, it's going to blend really nice. And I'm going to help move it around just a little bit. And in doing this, it does add a little bit of texture and wear um, on the sand dollar itself. Okay, so for now, I think that looks, well, I do want to add just a little bit more, maybe up in this corner. Because as we know, um, as the watercolor paint is drying, it does lighten up. And so we, at this point, we want this to dry really well before we move on to the next step. And we will be adding another, kind of like another layer, so to speak, on top of this. But we want this to dry well. So I'm going to set this off to the side. And while that one is drying, I'll bring out my next one. And so for this next one, we'll do this one in the greens. And so I'm going to go through the same thing with this. And I put just a small amount of color on my brush so that I can see where I've put the water, the water on the card itself or on the sand dollar. So I'll go around and just kind of get the water on this one. And while I'm doing this, um, there's a couple little fun facts about sand dollars, and one of them is that the folklore of the sand dollar is that it rep they represent coins from mermaids. So that's always a fun, fun little thing to tell the kids, especially when they're out on the beach looking for these, that they're coins from the mermaids. Okay, so. We have, we've gone through and 
laid the groundwork there. So now I'm going to go back and grab some green. And we can get started on this one. And this is one that I had already sketched out. And I do like to um, sketch them out first. I don't feel comfortable enough just, just starting to paint without some type of um, lines to follow. So you may even want to, you know, practice drawing a few of them. And trust me, after you do two or three, you'll be able to breeze right through them. They, because they really are easy to draw. All right, and this is such a nice shade of green. I believe the name of this is Emerald Green. Okay, and I want to follow that rough edge around. And then each one of these um, openings in the middle, you know, they're just like a large teardrop shape. So they're rounded on the outside edge and they come to a point in the middle. All right, so we are almost there. A couple years ago, I was doing a lot of these. I mean, a lot of these because each one is an original hand painted. And I was timing myself and I had gotten to the point where I could draw and paint one entire sand dollar in less than three minutes. Now I haven't been doing as many lately so I probably am not that quick and that's okay but I was kind of surprised at how quickly I was able to paint them. Draw them and paint them. Okay and for any of you that are not are not aware of some of the details of sand dollars you know when they're actually alive they're not white you know when you find them on the beach a lot of times they are white or a light tan color um, but when they're alive they're not white they're much darker okay so I've gone through and you could see where I did put in a little bit more of the color in some areas so as that's drying um, the, those areas will stay dry and then of course the other areas they'll lighten up a little bit. So that one is done. I'm going to set that to the side. And then for the final one will be my lavender or purple. And I'll be doing the same thing with this. Let me grab just a little bit of color on this so I can see where the water is going. And I've tried painting these without going through and adding the water, you know, so that I'm working a wet on wet. I've tried doing them wet on dry. And the final look just does not turn out that nice. So this is the best way that I have found to do it. If you want to try other ways, you know, that's always good to experiment. See what works for you. And then the paper that I use, which is the arches, um, I find that it works best because it does have nice texture, and I like the texture. Okay, so now that I have, have my water laid down, um, I'm going to go and grab some of the violet or purple paint, and here we're just going to kind of zoom through and get some color throughout the entire sand dollar so I can go back and add a little bit <coughs> excuse me in areas to give it a little bit of texture okay and Right. And you can see how this does move along pretty quickly.
And this is my number eight round brush. This is really my go-to brush. It, it works so well on smaller designs, right up until some fairly large designs. And I guess it's just a comfort level that I have with this particular brush. I will be using the 01 brush on some fine little details that we'll be putting on in a few minutes. All right, so I have this one. Let me just smooth that out a little bit. So now I'm going to go through and just add a little more color in a couple of areas so that it can dry with a nice texture. All right, and another little fact about the sand dollars is they are related to sea urchins. So they're all, all out there in the waters. The sea urchins are a little little more um, prickly if you step on them. So <laughs> you have to be careful of that while you're looking for the sand dollars in the low, um, you know, the, the waters that are ankle deep. So I'm setting that off to the side so that that one can dry. Now this one, the blue one, the first one that we did, is nice and dry now. So I'm going to take my eraser and just go through and quickly remove some of the edges, you know, the pencil edges that are still showing. All right, and even on these little inside um, areas, there could be a little bit of pencil mark still left. So <clears throat> we do have that all cleaned up. And so now I'm going to take my 01 brush and I'm going to grab some of the blue because now what I want to do is just put in some some little um, texture marks, some aging spots, so to speak. Yeah. And they're just like little dashes and dots in various areas on the sand dollar. Just kind of hit or miss. Some can be lighter or darker. Okay, so that one is done, and I will grab, well, the purple and the green, they're still not quite dry, so we're going to give those a minute, and while we're waiting for those to dry, what we can do is grab um, the Micron permanent marker, and I always put a little frame around these, and so... Uh, what I do on most of my cards is just like a little star in the corner and then along the short sides I do three little X's. One, two, three, and then into the corner. And then on the long side I put four. And they're not really stars, they're more like a little X. So I go one, two, three, four and then into the corner. And you can see I don't measure, I just kind of eyeball it. One, two, three, and then into the corner. And the lines don't have to be perfectly straight. That's what adds a little bit of character to it. And, um, you know, more of the original hand-drawn look. Okay, so I have that on there. And as I was doing that, I did notice there's couple more lines that I missed when I was doing my erasing. Okay, so <clears throat> with this one, because I'm going to let those other two continue to dry for a minute, I want to grab my background paper. And so for my background colored paper, um, which I do coordinate the same color, the blue with the blue. And so I'm going to put in just a little framing on this as well. And it's the same thing. I just do three little X's on the shorter sides and then four X's along the longer sides. Okay. And you could use any kind of a frame you want. If you didn't want to put any framing on it, that'd be fine also. 
you know, just kind of create your own, create your own look. Okay, so now that I do have the frame on that and the frame on this, what I would like to do is flip over the uh, little painted one, and with my double-sided tape, I just put um, a couple of pieces on here. And then I am going to just eyeball it onto the background paper. And then on the background paper, because that is a little bit larger, I do typically put three pieces of the double-sided tape and I kind of stagger them a little bit. Okay, and then with my card, I just center it on here. Now when I'm centering it, and you can do it um, actual, you know, completely centered, I do like to go just a little bit higher because down here I will be writing Siesta Key, which is the, um, the area that I live on the coast. Okay, so that pretty much is completed. And so with that one being completed, well, actually, let's go, yeah, that's completed. And so now we will go to the green one is pretty well dry. So again, I'm going to pick up my uh, 01 brush and I'm going to put on uh, some paint, some of the green paint, and we want to go through and just, you know, dab in a few of the wear marks. You can dab them throughout and Let's go ahead and erase these lines. And that's why when you're uh, putting the design on here originally, just be sure that you are drawing it very lightly so it's easier to erase. Okay, so with that, we can go ahead and grab the um, uh, actually, let's put our framing on it. Kind of getting ahead of myself here. And then once I get the these three cards completed, then I'll show you how I package them together to to give out to whether it's my guests or as a housewarming. A lot of people have been moving to this area over the last couple of years, and. Uh, so I do have realtor friends that buy these from me, these sets, you know, so that they can give them as a little housewarming or in with their little housewarming kit. They're very popular. Okay, so I have the frame on that. And then for this background paper, this is really just uh, colored paper that I buy at the craft store, you know, in a kind of like a small ream, I guess, and there's several different colors in there. They have, you know, the bright colors, they have the soft muted colors. So there's such a great selection. And even for the sand dollars themselves, if you wanted, you know, I have these coastal, to co coastal tones of the green, the blue and the lavender, but if you wanted to do like oranges and reds, um, that'd be adorable also. I have done those before. And they are very, very cute. So again, we're just going to put a couple pieces of the double-sided tape on the back of the sand dollar, and we're gonna center this just kind of eyeball it. And you can see on this one, I put the opening facing down. The other one, I had the opening facing up. And I do like to mix that up a little bit also. So now we'll flip this over. And we're going to add our double-sided tape here. Grab our greeting card. And we can center this a little bit high
And then for our final one, which is the purple or lavender, we'll go ahead and erase any little pencil marks that are still showing on here. All right, so now that we have that cleaned up, <clears throat> oops, let's go ahead and add a little bit of framing to this. One, two, three, four, corner, and then one, two, Three, corner. So this micron pen that I'm using, this is an O2 nib. If you want, if you have like an O3, even up to an O5, that works as well. You know, this is just a little bit finer. And on this textured paper, it really shows up light. Now you've probably noticed that on my background paper, it does look a little bit darker. So that's completed, and now for my um, violet background paper, I'll go ahead and get this one complete. You can see how quick and easy these are, and after you do a few, they really zip right by. Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> All right, so this we'll flip it over and for our final one, put just a little bit, whoops, tape on there. Now I have used the double sided foam tape, which adds quite a bit of dimension when you're. Um, layering these these different um, layers on the cards and that is a really nice look also <clears throat> okay so here's my last card and we'll go ahead and put this on here center it just a little bit higher okay so then I do as I mentioned I like to go ahead and just write siesta key on all three of them such a nice nice little gift you know to take home So a lot of people frame these. You know, they just, they take them home and buy cute little frames and put them in the frame, which is a great idea as well. Okay, so we have them all completed. Uh, destination is written on there. Let me put this off to the side. So I like to take a piece of raffia. Let me move this. And just very... Um, very basically wrap it around and securely you don't want it too loose that it's gonna fall off but you don't want it too tight that it's going to damage the edges of the cards either and so that's um, that's kinda done and let me see if I can't get this into a a little bit of a bow here. We want just a nice little organic feel. Okay, so let me pull these up. You can see you kind of have to work with this just a little bit to get the look. Okay, so there, that is the completed look and a nice little gift set of greeting cards. They're a seaside greeting card, um, different colors and there, you could see how quick and easy they are to do. Everybody loves them. It's definitely a win-win for everyone. And um, 
just a quick little thing to do on a Saturday afternoon. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I answer everyone. I'd love to see what you all have to say. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Like the video, share it with your friends. I appreciate that as well. And until next time, ciao for now.